today we're going to read from the Usborne Fairy Tale Treasury. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Size pumpkin. This is very nice. Look, we've got all these lovely, lovely stories. We're going to do all of them, but today we're going to do the frog prints. The Frog Prince. Once upon a time, when magic was much more common than it is today, there was a king who had seven daughters. The six older princesses were all very beautiful, but the seventh was so beautiful the sun itself could not outshine her, and her name was Aurora. One by one, the older princesses got married and left home, until only Aurora was left. She, however, refused to marry, not until I find the perfect prince, she insisted. One day, Aurora was by herself in the palace gardens. She was playing with a gold and it rolled away into a pond and sank into the gloomy depths. Oh no, cried Aurora, racing after it. She peered into the dark water but there was not so much as a gleam of gold. How will I get it back? Don't worry, croaked a bright emerald green frog sitting on a lily pad. I will help you if you will help me in return. What do you want? She asked. I'll give you my pearl necklace or my golden ring. No, said the frog, I don't want riches. I just want to come home with you to eat from your it up in the air and catching it again, and laughing merrily. But then she dropped the ball. Golden ball, throw your own little plate, drink from your own little cup, and sleep on your own little pillow. Aurora looked at the frog's wet green skin and big bulgy eyes, and shivered. Still, he's only a frog, she thought. He couldn't hop all the way to the palace, so she agreed. The frog dived deep under the water, when he reappeared, he held a shining golden ball. Thank you, cried Aurora. She snatched the ball and set off for the palace at a run. Hey, what about your promise, called the frog, hopping splashily after her. But Aurora pretended not to hear, and he was soon left far, far behind. When she got back, Aurora didn't tell anyone about the frog. In fact, by dinner time she had forgotten all about him. Her six older sisters were visiting and she was busy finding out their news. They were sitting down to eat and chattily happy chatting all the time when they heard a strange noise. Hoppity splash, hoppity splash, hoppity splash! Something with wet webby feet was hopping up the marble staircase. Aurora's heart sank. Oh no! Princess, youngest princess, let me in, came a croak. Aurora, open the door, ordered the king. Hoppity splash. A bright emerald green frog leapt into the room. Who's that? asked the oldest princess. Uh, just a frog, replied Aurora. He helped to get my ball out of the pond and now he wants to come for dinner. A frog, squealed her sisters. Yuck, send him away. Princess, youngest princess, have you forgotten your promise? cried the frog quickly. What promise? asked the king. The frog fixed Aurora with his big eyes. To let me eat from your own little plate, drink from your own little cup, and sleep on your own little pillow, he said. Ugh, said her sisters, shuddering. Don't let him! The king looked stern. Princesses must keep their promises. So Aurora pressed her lips together, scooped up the frog, and carried him to the table. Hoppity splat! The frog jumped onto her plate. Hoppity splosh! He dived into her cup. Mmm, 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 delicious, he groped. Princess, why aren't you eating anything? Aurora closed her eyes. Somehow I'm not hungry anymore, she said faintly. At last the meal was over. Aurora couldn't wait to get away. 
but as soon as she pushed back her chair, the frog called out again. Princess, youngest princess, have you forgotten your promise? Princesses must, began the king, keep their promises. Yes, yes, I know, muttered Aurora. Her sisters looked on, horrified, as she seized the frog and marched off to her bedroom. Awful amphibian, she sighed, dropping him onto her pillow. I can't believe you're making me do this. To her surprise, the frog hung his head. I'm sorry, he said sadly. You must find me revolting. He looked so upset, Aurora found herself feeling sorry for him. I don't think you're revolting, she said more kindly. I'm just not used to frogs. But you're so beautiful and I'm so green and ugly, sniffed the frog. Aurora wanted to cheer him up. You're not ugly, she said brightly. Just, uh, perfectly froggy. And to prove it, she gave him a kiss. There was a bang and a puff of emerald green smoke. When the smoke cleared, the frog was gone and a young prince was standing in its place. Aurora gasped. He was tall and dark and handsome with bright emerald green eyes and Aurora thought he looked quite, quite perfect. Thank you, cried the prince. A wicked witch turned me into a frog, but now you've broken her spell. I'm myself again and all because of you. He danced for joy, spinning Aurora around with him. Aurora blushed. But I was so mean to you, she said. Yes, but you were kind too, pointed out the prince. And that's what broke the spell. Now we can get married and live happily ever after. That is, if you'd like to marry me, he added anxiously. Oh yes, said Aurora, smiling. I've been waiting for my perfect prince, who'd have thought I'd have kiss a frog to find you.